class this summer? Yeah! Yeah, yeah guess what? Something really special happens in December. On the count of three, everybody scream what it is. One, two, three. Yeah! Christmas Yeah, Christmas. I'm really excited about Christmas. Really excited about Christmas, and I'm really excited about our virtue that we're going to be talking about this month. In the month of... December! December. We are talking about the virtue of what? Joy! Yeah, it's, it's joy. It's not yodge. It's joy. But if you say it backwards, it's yodge. We're talking about yodge, yo. Yeah, no, okay. We're talking about joy, and what is joy? How are we going to define joy this month? Anybody know? How? Christmas. <laughs> All right. Now, we're defining joy as finding a way to be happy even when things don't go your way. All right, there's a big difference between happiness and joy, all right? Happiness, a lot of times, is based on our circumstances. It's kind of based on if things are going well in life. Things are going well, generally, you're happy, right? But joy, listen, joy is actually a fruit of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, and joy is something that you can have in your life even when things don't go so well. Like if you wake up and your your car won't start or stuff like that, or you wake up late and your car won't start. What's happened to me this morning? Yeah, I woke up a little late and then I go to start my car, my car won't start. My battery's dead, I have to pull out the van, try to start it up. I couldn't get the hood open, so I had to get pliers and, and yank on the wire to get the hood open. Finally, I was able to start my car. But you know what? Was I happy? No. Was I joyful? No. Absolutely. Why not? Why not be joyful in all circumstances? See, joy is finding a way to be happy even when things don't go your way. We can have joy. Pretty awesome stuff. Because joy is a fruit of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. So cool, cool, cool stuff. So let's have joy. So everybody go, woo! And we smile real big. And say, I'm full of joy. Now, now, there's this old song we used to sing uh, when I was a kid. I don't know if you guys ever heard the song, I've got the joy, 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 yeah, joy. Yeah, yeah. joy. That's kind of a, I kind of started that low. Let me start a little higher. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And then, and then there was another part that I really liked too. And if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on a tag. Ouch! Sit on a tag. Ouch! Sit on a tag. And if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on a tag. Ouch! Sit on a tag to stay. It's a wonderful, wonderful song that we sang as children. Don't you like that song? Yeah. yeah. We got the joy of the Lord down in our heart. And you know, if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on attack. Brilliant. Brilliant song. What's attack? It's something sharp. You sit on it and you're like, ouch! Yeah, like a needle. Yeah. Like a attack. But it was a wonderful song that we got to sing, and it reminded us that, you know what? We want to have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And you know what? The devil doesn't like it. He goes sit on attack. <laughs> Pretty fun stuff. Joy. Finding a way to be happy, even when things don't go our way. Good stuff. Uh, we're going to tell some really cool stuff that happened in the Bible. It happened to people's lives where, where they weren't maybe having a happy time, but they were able to have the joy of the Lord as they were holding on to the promise of God. Christmas. Does anybody know how many days it is until Christmas? 24! That's right. 24 days until Christmas.
until Christmas. I am so excited. I'm so excited. Wait, 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 wait. It's actually, it was 24 days at midnight this morning. It's now 10.30 a.m. That means it's 23 days, 13 hours, and 30 minutes. Can you guys believe it? The countdown to Christmas. Who's excited? You're excited? You're excited? I'm excited. Oh, guys, guys, guys. Guess what? Guess what? I got online last week and I ordered the perfect Christmas tree for High Five for joyful December month. I'm so excited. It's just like the Christmas tree that I had when I was a little boy. Six foot tall, big, green, beautiful. And here it is. It was delivered here last night. Wait a second. That doesn't quite look like it's six feet tall, but <laughs> let's take a look. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. Oh, there! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not the Christmas tree I ordered. Six foot tall. Green. This is this is two feet tall and purple. Well, you know what? That's all right because we can decorate this tree just the same. Oh, uh, it's going to be great. This is a beautiful tree, too. It's not quite what I was expecting, but, but that's all right. That's all right. Guess what else? Guess what else? I brought my box full of joy this morning. A box full of joy. Because I'm so happy, but I want you guys to be happy, too. So my box full of joy is going to spread the Christmas joy around the room. Not just to me, but to you and to you and to you. Do you guys know what I have in here? Yes, I know. That's right, that's right. But it's more than just a basketball. It's more than just wrapping paper. It's Christmas joy. Christmas joy. All right, let's take a look here. Let's take a look here. Oh, what says Christmas time like a candy cane? A delicious peppermint candy cane. I think I'm going to pop one up and take a bite right now. Anymore. But you know what? That's all right because it's still pepperminty. Let me try it out. Oh, Christmas, Christmas. Christmas. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, that's good. I think I got a little bit of wrapper with that too. That's all right. A little candy cane is good. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Nothing says Christmas joy like getting the perfect present. And you guys saw it. I got this basketball for my dad. My dad loves basketball. He's a Kentucky Wildcats fan. Any Kentucky Wildcats fans out there? Oh, that's all right. That's all right. My dad loves this basketball, and I'm going to give it to him. Nothing like wrapping the perfect Christmas present. I got some wrapping paper and some tape. You guys know I'm really great at wrapping up presents. So you gotta just you gotta make sure you get enough paper, and then you gotta you gotta cut it just right. And then you gotta wrap it something like this. Then you guys, you guys ever wrap a present before? Yes. It's, it's kind of hard if you don't know what you're doing, but but it's all right because I've done this before. I've done this before. It's not a big problem. Not a problem. Not a problem. Not a problem. Oh, my dad is going to love this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's stuck to my hand. Well, that's kind of cool, though, right? Nobody can steal the ball from me now. Oh, I got to this one. I'm going to have to figure out a way to get this off. Um, oh, 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 oh. I've got one more thing in here that is so awesome. I've got a wrapper on this candy cane. Can. All right, I'm going to just, I'll, I'll clean that up later. All right, hot chocolate. Have oh. you guys ever had hot chocolate? Yeah. Oh, nothing yeah. says so. Christmas like a cold December day and, and a delicious cup of hot chocolate. It's so yummy. Mm -hmm. Here's to you guys. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. And Christmas joy. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, that was too hot. Whoa. Oh, I got a little chocolate on my hand. That's all right. That's all right. Because you know what? It's December and it's Christmas time. And you know what? I'm happy anyway. Even though 
some of these things are not going quite the way I had planned. Can you help me out with this? Give it a pull, give it a pull. Oh, there you go. Hey, all right, we'll fix that up later. My dad's going to love this. My dad's going to love this. It's all right, guys. You know why? Because I can still have Christmas joy. Even. Oh. Thank you, thank you. I'll make it a Christmas mustache. All right. It's all right, because I can still have some Christmas joy, even when things don't go exactly my way. Because you know what? Joy is finding ways to be happy, even when things don't go your way. All right? Let me say that one more time. Are you guys listening to this? Joy is finding a way to be happy, even when things don't go your way. Ah! Woo! Have you guys heard that before? No. Do you think that's even possible, to be happy when things don't go your way? Yes. That's right, it is, because that's what true joy is. It doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really depend on what, what's going on around you. True joy comes from uh, being content with where you are and, and what, what God's doing in your life. And that's what we're talking about this month. We're going to spend the whole month of December, the most joyful month of the year, talking about true joy. And I tell you guys what, I'll tell you what, we have tons of reasons to have joy because of what God is doing in and around us right now. Okay? And guess what? Today, Pastor Chris is going to tell you guys a story, a story about just that thing, about how the children of Israel had all kinds of reasons to be sad, but God spoke into their lives and told them about, about what he was going to do, and he gave them a promise, a promise for them to hold on to, to have joy in their lives. So Pastor Chris is going to come in just a minute. I need to clean this hot chocolate off of my hand. He's going to tell us this Christmas story um, about the children of Israel. Tell you what, guys, when Pastor Chris comes... Can you guys give me give me a hand here? We want we want to give him a snap, a Christmas snap. Can you guys snap for Pastor Chris? A snap for Pastor Chris. When Pastor Chris comes out, I want you guys to snap for him just like this. Hold your hands up. I can't hear you. Okay, that's good. That's good. All right, Pastor Chris. When you come on out, we're gonna give you a snapping ovation. Or maybe not.
red hot chocolate cleaned off my hand. I think we can try this again. You guys know a minute ago I told you that Pastor Chris was going to come out and he was going to tell you guys a story about how the children of Israel could have joy even though bad things were going on. All right, so here's what I need you guys to do. We're going to try to snap again. I've got hot chocolate cleaned off my hands. All right, could you guys snap with me? Hands up in the air. Let's snap for Pastor Chris. It's working. He's coming. He's going to come. I know it. I know it's going to work this time. Pastor Chris, we're stopping for you. There he is. Hey. Oh, hey, all right. That's a wonderful snapping this morning. Yeah, How's it going? These hey. guys are awesome, man. They're awesome. I'm so happy. I feel like good. I like the Christmas little charm kind of bell there. The, the hat and joy, snowflakes, and uh, tree. Yeah, okay. Pretty awesome stuff. It's all jolly in here. It's beautiful. You know what? I had to call you Jolly Johnny. That's what they do call me. Jolly Johnny? Jolly Johnny, like yeah. Joyful Johnny or something like that. Cool. Beautiful. All right, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to decorate a little more. It is looking great in here, guys. All right, Pastor Chris. We'll see you. The lights. I love the lights. Great. I love what Jeff does with the lights. Hey, you know what? What's really awesome today is because when the, the, the introduction that says everything fades with the word of the Lord... You know how you guys are always like, I can see you, I can see you. You couldn't see me today, could no, you? No, we couldn't. Yeah. I can't see you. couldn't see me today. I saw you. You got vision eyes. I saw you. I saw you. Everything fades, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. And you guys you guys didn't even see me on the stage. I did. I You know what? I got the Bible, I got God's Word right here in my hand, and you know what? As you flip through the pages of the Bible, you'll notice all kinds of amazing stories. You know, we're talking about joy this month, finding a way to be happy even when things don't go your way, and you know what? There's a lot of people in the Bible that had joy when things were not going their way. They had to find a way to have the joy of the Lord, because you know what? Life circumstances didn't always make them happy. So I want to spend some time going through some amazing stories through God's Word and to see how people, even when things aren't going their way, how they can have joy. Just like Jolly Johnny, you know, um, I think he was ordering a six-foot-tall green tree. Yeah, it was. And that's like a short purple tree. He was little. You know what? But he, he was still, little. It's, he still he was seems little. to be so joyful he this was morning. Little. But you can have joy even when things he don't go little. your way. He's little, right. All right. He so, so cool stuff. He now, you know what? I'm going to need your help this morning. How about we show some images of some things that happen in the Bible? And let's see if you guys can kind of help me tell the stories from God's Word of um, some cool stuff that happened and people that still had their joy, all right? Test, test this mic. All right, so I'm going to come to the crowd here this morning, and I happen to have a mic in my back pocket, so this will be fun. All right, let's take a look at this first image on the screen. Now, who can tell me what they think that is? Um, it's a sunrise. It's a sunrise? Okay. Ah! Lisa, what, what kind of sunrise? A morning sunrise. A morning sunrise. Now, how does that place look amazingly beautiful? Yeah, what does it look like? It looks like a desert. It looks like a desert? Or what do you think it looks like? The first sunrise. The first sunrise? You know what? Maybe it does look like the first sunrise. What do you think it looks like? It looks like Adam and Eve's garden. Looks like Adam and Eve's garden. You know what? You are absolutely correct. We're going back to the very beginning. Remember Genesis, the book of beginnings? Adam and Eve's garden. They had a beautiful paradise. God created for them a beautiful paradise. And they, they didn't have to work for their food. They just got to enjoy it, enjoy the animals, and they got to name the animals. And everything was beautiful. But, but something happened to Adam and Eve. What happened to Adam and Eve? Anybody remember what happened? And let's take a look at the next picture. There's Adam and Eve. What happened to them? They ate an apple and devil came. What do you think, Adam? They ate something more supposed to off a tree. They ate something more supposed to off a tree. What do you think? A snake came and told him to eat the apple. A snake came and told him to eat the apple. Let's see what the lady said. The lady said, "Eat the the pear. The snake said, 'Eat the fruit.'" 
Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, the devil told them, told them to eat the fruit of good and bad, and they ate it anyway. And God told them not to, so they had to be kicked out of the garden. Yeah, yeah, you guys all get good answers. Yeah, see, Satan came like a serpent, and he tempted Eve and said, here, this is the tree. God's, did God say you really can't eat of the fruit of this tree? And she's like, yeah, can't eat it, can't even touch it, or else we're going to die. And so he tricked Eve, and Eve took it, the fruit, took a bite out of it, and he gave some to Adam, and Adam disobeyed God, because God said you can eat of any of the fruit of all the trees except for this one tree, don't eat of the fruit of this tree, the knowledge of good and evil, or else you're going to die. But they did. And so they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. They got booted out, and there was an angel there that was there with a sword to guard the Garden of Eden so they couldn't get back in there and then and live forever dead in their sin. So, so pretty, pretty wild story. Well, you know what? Okay, years later, years passed later, do you think God was still with them even though they sinned? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, see, God was still with them, and he still loved them, even though they sinned. But sin separated them in their, their perfect relationship with God. But God had a plan. He was working out a plan in order, even from the beginning. All right, let's take a look at our next, our next slide. Oh, look who that is. I know exactly who that looks like. That looks like a guy by the name of Abraham. Yeah, Abraham. Now, now what do you think? Who here thinks... They know why those stars in that picture is significant. What, what's significant about these stars? Um, they might see God. You might see God? What do you think? What do you think? Because the Lord said that I will make your descendants as many on the sand as the seashore and the stars in the sky. Yes, exactly correct. God spoke to Abraham and he said, he said look at the stars. You can't even count those stars. He said, so will your descendants be. I'm going to give you sons and daughters and descendants that it will be as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. That's a pretty amazing promise, isn't it? And he made that promise to Abraham even though Abraham was old and he and, he and his wife didn't even have any kids yet. But God made this amazing promise and it was pretty cool. He had a, so many descendants and they were numerous and, and it was, they became like a nation of people. So many people. And you know what? Something happened to them. Some things got really tough uh, for the descendants of Abraham. And I wonder what happened to them. Let's take a look at the next slide. What, who, who thinks they know what this is from? What story in the Bible this is from? What do you think? Uh, the Egyptians that are, are um, taking the, the Israelites as prisoners and uh, the, their slaves. Okay, the Egyptians, that, that's absolutely correct. The Egyptian people, see, see, the descendants of Abraham were living in the land of Egypt, and they were getting so numerous, and the Egyptian people got scared, so they made them their slaves, and they, they forced them to do hard labor, all right? And, but you know what happened? What? what? Something amazing happened. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't. What? Moses. Moses. See, absolutely see. correct. A guy named Moses was born, and his life was spared, and he was, he was raised in Pharaoh's palace himself, and so he, he learned some, some, some good stuff, you know, there, some good stuff about leadership and organization, probably. And, and you know what? He did something bad, and he had to leave for a number of years, but God called him, and he came back to set the Israelite slaves free. Pretty cool. Let's take a look at the next slide, see what the next slide is. Oh, does anybody know who this is? Who thinks they know who this is? A king. Yeah, okay, now, who, who, who was the person in the Bible who you wouldn't think that they were going to be a king, but they were anointed to be the king? Does anybody know who that is? Who? David. David. Absolutely correct. What was he before he became a king? He was a shepherd. He was out in the fields with the stinky sheep, and he was probably pretty stinky himself, sweaty and stinky with the animals. And you know what? He was anointed by the prophet to be the next king over Israel, King David. And you know what? God was pleased with David. God said, David, you're a man after my own heart. And you know what? God, God had a covenant with David and said, you know what? Your line will always be uh, ruling over the throne of Israel. Pretty cool. He, he made a promise to him. But you know what? 
Something happened. See, God, even though God promised that, that, that through the lineage of David, uh, they, were, they would rule and be a king established on the throne forever, something happened and it kind of seemed like it was going to mess up that promise. What happened? Let's take a look at the next slide. Anybody know what this is? What? What do you think? Anybody know? Kind of, yeah. So like, all right, let's say it. God's people, the Hebrew people, the Israelites, they were bound up and they were forced to live with their enemies. They were taken into exile. So even though, you know, they had King David and other kings, you know what? The nation of Israel was split, you know, and, and other kingdoms began to rule over them and they were taken into exile. So it didn't seem like the promise was going to come into fulfillment, the promise that there would be someone on the throne through David's lineage forever. But you know what happened? I wonder what happened. Let's take a look at our next slide. What do you that old man is? I love this story. You know who that old man is? Moses. He was a prophet that prophesied something to oh. Who do you think? What's his name? Oh, no. Samuel. Samuel, no. All right, here. Let me, let me read. Let me read a passage of scripture to you. Now, there was a prophet by the name of Isaiah. Ever say Isaiah? Now listen to what this prophet prophesied. In Isaiah chapter nine, he said, "For to us a child is born." To us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Just of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Listen, he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom. Establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. Wow. Pretty amazing stuff. So Isaiah, a prophet, he prophesied that there's going to be a child that's going to be born. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father. And he said he's going to reign on David's throne forever. So he was promising, he was prophesying about a promise of God, the fulfillment of His promise. And so years and years later, somebody was born. Who was a little child that was born? It's really, really important. Anybody know? Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Jesus is very, very important. The, the most important birth that's ever recorded in the history of mankind was Jesus. And he was born, he had very humble beginnings. He was born in a manger. Kind of like, like if you see a stall with animals in a manger, it's like a, like a feeding trough where they feed the animals. Well, they didn't have any room for them in, in, the, in the inn there in Bethlehem. And so they made a place by a stinky barn of animals. And Jesus was born there and laid in a manger. So he had very humble beginnings. Jesus, the Son of God, humbled himself. And he came to earth and he grew up to be a man and he lived and he died and he resurrected from the grave. And he's coming back again as a king to rule forevermore to the, on the throne of David to be established forever. So God is fulfilling, fulfilling his promises. So do you see how in all the stories of the Bible, do you see how sometimes they went through very difficult things? Yeah, you know, like sin entering the world, getting kicked out of the garden and, and Abraham being very old but yet receiving a promise that he'd have many children. He finally has many children, but guess what? They get taken as slaves for over 400 years. Man, that was rough. Then Moses comes, and God uses Moses to deliver his people. And finally they become a nation, and they have their own kings, but then they get taken into exile. So it seems like things are going, to go, are going good, but then things go really, really bad. But you know what? God was with them throughout everything throughout all of history and he's always keeping his promises and God is also with us and he's with you and even though sometimes things seem to go good but then they go really bad and then they go good and bad God is always with us and he will always fulfill his promises and we can have joy because God keeps his promises that's our bottom line this morning say I can have joy I can have joy, joy.
Because God keeps his promises. Say, I can have joy. I can have joy. Say, because God keeps his promises. Because God keeps his promises. Say, I can have joy. I can have joy. Because God keeps his promises. Because God keeps his promises. Awesome. Now look at me. I want to say a prayer here in just a moment. But I want you guys to think about this. Now, during this month, the month of December, I know we're looking forward to Christmas, and, and we look forward to getting together with our family, and, and we look forward to getting presents. That's a lot of fun. But you know what? I want you to think about the most important thing this holiday season is, you know what? It's not whether you get the present that you really wanted for Christmas. And it's great to see our families, but that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is, is, that our joy? is that, listen, we can have joy because God always keeps his promises. And we celebrate the fact that Jesus, the Son of God, was born on the earth and lived a perfect life. And he died for our sins so that we can have life in him. That's the most important part of celebrating Christmas, this Christmas season, is the fact that Jesus came, and he came to love us, to love us so much that he would die for us and then resurrect for us so that we could have a relationship with him and his kingdom forever. That's pretty awesome stuff. Now that is something to be excited and joyful about no matter what happens in our lives. Wow, 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 wow! Isn't that awesome, guys, to see all the great things that God has done from the very beginning and how He kept His promises? Man, so it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty wild, right, to see that story from the very beginning, the children of Israel, all the tough things that they had to go through and all the hard times, but God promised that He'd be with them, and you know what? He kept that promise, and He was with them all the way from the beginning um, all the way up to now. And isn't it awesome how Isaiah gave that promise that God was going to send His Son, Jesus? And that's what we celebrate this month, right? That's why December is the month of joy, because we're celebrating the birth, the coming of Jesus, our Savior. You know what, guys? God has made promises for each and every one of you guys, too. One of the best promises that God has made for you guys is that He will always be with you. Always. No matter what, God is with you. So if, if you're scared, you can, you can lean on that promise and know that God is with you. If, if there's a big storm and the lights go out and you're in the dark, it's okay because God is with you, right? Or if, if your basketball team, if one of your buddies gets sick on the team and you have to fill in for them and, and you're playing a position you've never played before, you might be nervous, right? But it's okay because God has promised that he's with us no matter what. And that's a promise that we can hold on to. So even if we feel a little nervous, we can still have joy. Guys, remember, joy, joy does not necessarily mean that everything going on around you is just perfect. But joy is having peace on the inside, even when things on the outside aren't going just right, right? Joy is, is what we have because we know that God is in control and God keeps his promises no matter what. He sees the big picture, he has a plan, and we can have joy knowing that God is in control. Do you guys remember the bottom line for this week? The bottom line? Yeah. Why can we have joy? That's right. The bottom line this week is I can have joy because God keeps his promises. And that promise that God will always be with you, he keeps that promise and he is always with you. All right. Before we dismiss today, I need someone to come up here and help me out with to, today's uh, memory verse. Today's memory verse. All right. Yeah. Come on up, baby. Come on up. Can we get the can we get the memory verse up here? The memory verse. Do you guys remember the memory verse? What uh, what scripture it is? Philippians four four. That's right. Philippians four four. All right. I need you to help me out. I'm going to let you speak into the microphone. Can you read out the the memory verse for us?
Thanks a lot, brother. Have a seat. All right, that's the memory verse this week. Philippians 4.4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. All right? Do you guys know rejoice is another word for joy? It's another word for having joy. Thanks a lot. And that was awesome. Right? We can have joy because God keeps his promises. And you know where we can we can read more about those promises is in God's scripture, right? So if you guys if you guys have your Bibles at home, you can look up and you can learn more of God's promises from reading your word. Or ask your parents or one of one of the high five helpers to help you out. Alright? So we can rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Alright, guys. I'll tell you what, it's been an awesome time with you guys this week. I'm looking forward to hanging out with you guys for the month of December. All right? I want you guys to remember that God always keeps His promises. All right? I'll see you guys again next week. All right. Say thanks, Jolly Johnny. Thanks, Jolly Johnny. <laughs> awesome. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. All right. Now that reminds me of another song that I knew when I was a kid. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. You guys ever heard that song? Yeah. No? Some of you? Yeah? Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. No. You ever heard that song? And it takes me back. It's old school. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. See, that's a message worth repeating right there. Paul wrote that. Rejoice, Lord, always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Yep. Yes, yeah, Saul that turned into Paul. Now, someone, he is someone that really knew about the joy of the Lord because Paul, he had a lot of things go wrong in his life. I mean, when he was first converted, when he first became a Christian, it wasn't a simple sitting in church, hearing a nice sermon from a preacher. You raise your hands and say a prayer and get saved. He was actually on his way to have Christians arrested, riding on a donkey in the city. And a blind of light come and blinded him. He was blind for three days during his conversion experience. Uh, but although he was physically blinded, it was for the first time his eyes were ever really opened spiritually. And he was able to have new life as he, as he got to know Jesus Christ. And you know what? Paul, he began to do awesome things. He began to travel around and build churches in different cities um, around the world. And he would preach and he would write letters. And you know what? He was even arrested, shackled up and put in prison. And you know what? Some of the letters that Paul wrote while he was in prison, he, he wrote letters to people. And, and in fact, the book of Philippians, I believe he wrote that while he was in prison. And it was a letter of joy. It was a letter to remind people that even though things may not be going great, you know, all the circumstances aren't great, but you can have joy in the Lord. And he was writing them, thanking them for their giving and, and stuff. And I like this verse, Philippians 4.4. 4. I like to call it a four-by-four four scripture. Take the Word of God, a power-packed verse, a power-packed four-by-four, and just whap you with the Word of God, right? So Philippians 4.4, 4, 4 by 4 rejoice in the Lord always, I will say it again, rejoice. And what's really cool about that verse is it says always, no matter what's going on in our lives, we can rejoice in the Lord. Always, I will say it again, rejoice. And if a guy like Paul can write a verse like that when he's in prison for preaching the gospel, if a guy like Paul can have joy, surely you and I can have joy. Because we got it pretty good. We got it pretty easy compared to the life that Paul lived. He was imprisoned. He was shipwrecked. How many of you guys have ever been shipwrecked on a boat? Almost drowned in a boat. And you know what? After he was shipwrecked, guess what happened? He was bit by a snake. I mean, you would think like trouble seemed to follow this guy everywhere he went. He was beat, imprisoned, you know, and, and people talked about him. He was shipwrecked, bitten by a snake, arrested. All these horrible things happened to Paul. And all he was trying to do after he became a Christian was preach the gospel and establish churches and, and help people become better Christians. And he'd write them letters and he'd pray and pray and pray for people. But you know what? Even though all the bad stuff happened to him, even though he was trying to do good, he would say, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, 
rejoice. So say this verse with me. Say, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Say, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. See, I like it because it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. And this next one's big and bold with an exclamation point. Rejoice, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice! Rejoice! So let's say it how it's written. Ready? Say, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice! Now let's say it all together. Ready? One, two, three. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice! I want you to yell that. I want you to yell that last rejoice real, real strong together in unison at the end. All right? Okay, just like it's written. Ready? One, two, three. Rejoice! Now let's start, let's start from the beginning. Ready? One, two, three. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Okay, one more time. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. All right, great job. Give yourself a hand. Great job. I want you to remember that this holiday season, this Christmas season, this month. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice! Remember that. It's not about the presents you get or give and all that stuff. It's about rejoicing in the Lord always, no matter what's going on in our lives. I will say it again. Rejoice. It's a message worth repeating.